Welcome back. You're still watching Politics Tonight, digging beyond the headlines. Now let's begin with some developments in the polity. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, PDP, in the 2023 elections. Atiku Abubakar says his legal tasu against President Bola Ahmed Tinubu is in the interest of all Nigerians. At a press briefing in Abuja, Atiku, along with PDP chieftains and party members, pledged to continue with the case at the Supreme Court, saying it is a fight for good governance. Correspondent Habib Lawal, who was at the press conference, now reports. The Chicago State University released the academic records of President Bola Tinubu two days ago to his political opponent, Atiku Abubakar, in line with an order of a United States court. Mr. Atiku, the presidential candidate of the opposition People's Democratic Party, in Nigeria's 25th February election, had requested the document to back his allegation against President Bola Ahmed Tinubu of forging his Chicago State University certificate. The allegation of forgery was one of those dismissed by Nigeria's presidential election court in the suit Atiku Abubakar filed to challenge the election of Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Atiku Abubakar at his press conference has called on his Labour Party counterpart Peter Obi and the new Nigeria People's Party, Rabiu Kwankwesu, to join his quest for justice in the certificate saga involving President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. In the price of liberty, is eternal vigilance. They have put the country first in their firm commitment to unravel the truth and hold leaders accountable. This gives me the hope that we have worthy partners in the struggle to reclaim the country we call our home. This quest is not for or about Atiku Abubakar. It is a quest for the enthronement of truth, morality, justice, and accountability in our public affairs. One of his lawyers, who also spoke, said they will tender their fresh evidence at the Supreme Court. From the certain authorities, the Supreme Court has held that they can accept a party to adduce fresh evidence as long as certain conditions are met. And from what transpired in the proceedings in U.S. court, that condition has already been met. Mr. Atiku, who came second in the presidential election, had challenged the victory of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu in court, but lost as the presidential tribunal struck out his petition. The allegation of forgery was one of those dismissed by the presidential election court. The presidential candidate of the PDP, Atiku Abubakar, has been silent since the Chicago State University released the certificate of President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. He, however, hinted at this media briefing that his fight with President Bola Ahmed Tinubu will come to an end when the Supreme Court declare the final verdict. Habib Alawal, TVC News, Abuja. The Kebbi State's governorship election petitions tribunal 16 in Benin Kebbi has upheld the election of the candidates of the All Progressives Congress APC, Asir Idris, as the duly elected governor of the state. This is after the People's Democratic Party, PDP, and its candidate, Aminu Bande, approached the tribunal seeking to obtain the election. They were challenging the academic qualification of the deputy governor, governorship candidate of the APC, Abubakar Tafida, while also arguing that the election did not comply with the provision of the Electoral Act. As a I have affirmed that a mass voting, that lawful vote cast at the state election for previous national and since remains the external law of the people of the previous school, as a has already added a voice to confirm that they didn't forge a certificate and they have a new certificate to qualify them and enable them a right. And that legal position of the ownership of KB State and the ownership of the KB State certificate. And what is amazing, all of us here, is to advise that KB is one and about family. The election comes and goes. Even the judgment now is not for the election, the electoral system. It's now time for us to sit down together and look at the area where we have to join hands, both APC and PDP, to make KB the guitar state in the annals of history. 
Let's take, a, let's take a short break and when we return, it's the time to speak with President Bola Tinubu's lawyer, Walea Falabi, for discussion on Atiku Abubakar versus President Tinubu and the fact of the Chicago certificate matter. Please stay with us. Welcome back. You're still watching Politics Tonight, digging beyond the headlines. Now to our interview with the guest of the day. I am joined by President Bola Tinubu's lawyer, Wale Afolabi, for discussion on Atiku Abubakar versus President Tinubu and the facts of the Chicago certificate matter. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Right. So after a protracted uh, legal battle, Chicago State University released President Tinubu's academic records. I'd like you to tell us how it all happened. Well, um, um, a wrong information was uh, planted out there that uh, President Bola Tinubu uh, did not attend Chicago State University. And um, someone sold that to Waziri Atiku Abubakar. And uh, on that premise, he approached to his lawyers, uh, the high court in uh, Chicago, uh, asking that his records be released to him because uh, he had it on good authority that he did not uh, attend the university. Uh, at some point, they decided to withdraw the case and then they went to the federal court and uh, they sought similar relief. And uh, the Chicago State University, CSU, through the registrar, deposed to an affidavit wherein it was stated that not only did the president attend uh, CSU, but he, in fact, graduated with uh, high honors in a very rigorous major, accounting. Yeah, he was uh, one of their best students, and no wonder he was hired uh, directly out of, uh, out of college. So uh, confronted with this information and uh, being reluctant uh, to beat a retreat, uh, they pivoted and uh, went in the direction of, oh, the certificate that he presented to Heineck was uh, forged. Now, the university came out and said, uh, this is their practice. Diplomas are merely ceremonial documents. What is important to them and to many universities in America is the transcript. Mm. It's in the transcripts that you see the grades, that you see the courses that they took, and uh, everything related to the, to the student, and all that you need to know about the student, uh, basically. But the uh, diploma is mainly ceremonial. It's for the day you know, that they graduate, and if you need a replacement, you apply for it, and you get it. So the university said the practices, once they give it out, they don't retain copies. So having given out the version that the president submitted to INEC, they did not have it in their possession. Now, at some point, the president requested for a replacement diploma, as most, as some students do. Now, it was prepared, but the president did not go back to pick it up. Uh, it was asked of the registrar, why did he not? come and pick it up, and uh, or why did he not ask that it should be sent to him? And uh, he uh, correctly answered, why don't you ask him? I'm not in a position to, to respond to, to that. So one Mr. Nahuru Ibar uh, came from Nigeria and requested that a copy of the certificate be handed, a, a copy of the president's certificate be handed over to him under a subpoena, which was obtained illegally. He had no rights to do that. What he did was wrong, absolutely wrong, and the university knew that what they did was equally wrong. The he, he had no right to get what he got. Now, especially since the president was not notified. Under FIPA laws, he should have been notified where he could have asserted, uh, asserted his rights to intervene and uh, push back if he wanted to. Now, the university, the only certificate that they had on their file for the president was the one that he did not pick up. The university made a copy of it and made it available to Mr. Inaoro Hiba. Mr. Inaoro Hiba 
had to do a lot of gymnastics with it. Went to the, I think, the federal court in uh, in Abuja or FCTI court. I don't know which one they went to. They went to, but went to the court in Abuja, uh, asking that the president should be prosecuted. Blah blah blah. And the matter that uh, didn't go anywhere predictably. Uh, somewhere along the line, uh, he went. He was. He went. He was in cahoots with uh, the camp of uh, Waziri uh, Bubaka, and uh, he provided it to them. And then, uh, as a late measure, they now adopted that as part of their uh, reply to the petition. It was not part of their petition. They only adopted it uh, at, the, at the later stage, which is not allowed under the electoral laws. Now, they now went to uh, to uh, to, this, to uh, the, the, uh, the federal court in the U.S. and said, "Hey, after the school had said." You know, we we uh, we don't have uh, that he graduated. They now went from that and now said, okay, let us have a copy of what you gave uh, Mr. Enahuru Hiba, which was also produced. Now, Mr. Enahuru Hiba and the legal team of uh, Abu Bakr Atiku, their belief was that the university only had one certificate for the president, which was the one that was presented to Mr. Hiba. And with that, they now, in their minds, believed that the one that must have been presented to INEC was forged. What they failed to realize was that in America, it's not just one diploma that is issued for all purposes. You can have as many diplomas as you wanted. Mm -hmm. If you want to apply for it, all you have to do is to pay for it. So in the university, they only have in their possession the diplomas that were not picked up. Just as in uh, the president's case, there were some other students who applied but did not pick up their diplomas, and these they made available to uh, Waziri Abu Bakr's lawyers for comparison. And if you look at them, I mean, I think the social media is awash with uh, all of these documents. If you take a look at what was issued to the president and some of the samples that the university found, you see similarities. They are very similar. So they are very similar. Honestly, uh, to me, uh, with uh, all sense of responsibility. Uh, to me, honestly, this is all uh, what they would call silly seasons. It just doesn't make any sense. If, if, if the president had not attended the school, that would have made a whole lot of sense. But having attended, and the university having come out to say, yes, he attended, and the university coming out to say, we issued out the diploma, and we don't have that on file because we gave it to him. It's not just him, it's the other students too. And then a classmate, someone who attended, the university, the same time that he did, and studied the same program, uh, deposed to an affidavit and said, we, I knew him, we were in the same class, we took the same courses, and we participated in a, a very tightly contested election, and he won. The same person who won, who defeated me, is the person who's the president of Nigeria today. I mean, one would have thought that would be the end of the matter. But now they're saying that uh, they want to go to the Supreme Court to introduce fresh evidence. I mean, the question that should agitate the minds of uh, lawyers, especially those who are very familiar with uh, uh, litigation uh, regarding election petitions. You're, first of all, you're going to the uh, Supreme Court to do exactly what? to introduce fresh evidence. First of all, uh, at least I know two of the lawyers uh, representing the Allah Waziri about Atiku Abu Bakr. I don't know them personally, but professionally. They are two of the finest lawyers that you find in uh, the person of Chief Chris Uche and uh, uh, Mr. Ejita Ojegere, SAN. I mean, these are very serious, highly knowledgeable lawyers. Chief Chris Uche was quoted by the Court of Appeal in their decision. If you look at uh, pages uh, 573 to 575, I believe, that Chief Chris Uche wrote a foreword in respect of a book titled Modern Nigerian Election Petitions and Appeals Law. It was published in 2017 by one Kelechi Peter Ikoruga. Chief Uche, a very fine lawyer, wrote in there that, and it was quoted in that judgment, that 
at the time you are filing your petition for purposes of election matters. That is when you put in all that you need to put in. You file everything along. You're filing your petition. You file your you file uh, your witness statement on oath, and then you stipulate the list of documents that you intend to rely on in proving your case. And in some cases, you even front load. But certainly, if you don't front load that particular evidence, facts relating to it, and the list of the evidence that you're going to rely on must be stated. This was not done. This was not done. If you look at the petition, they had four, the, 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 the petition was founded on four grounds. Now, ground, they're talking about 20, uh, the failure to, of the president to secure 25% of votes in Abuja, uh, over voting, uh, the failure of INEC to upload results, and D, that the president was not qualified to contest the election. That was it. Now, it, the written witness statement on oath, in support, none of these, none said anything about D. Mr. Falabi, yeah. uh, yes. let's, uh, let's speak uh, these issues one after the other. Uh, so the yes. U.S. District Court uh, for the Northern District of Illinois ordered the CSU to release the academic record of President Tinubu. But for the sake of clarity, what sort of documents were released by the university? Uh, the, 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 virtually everything that was in the, in the file. That was uh, everything that was given to them. Everything about everything that was in the file. That was, they got everything that was, that was there. I said all of his, uh, his grades, his transcripts, Everything. Well, if, you, if you say everything, what and what documents were released? Please be specific. Okay. Number one, uh, the released is uh, the transcripts, which showed clearly that he took courses from the school and that he graduated. His transcript from uh, the junior college I attended, Southwest College, was equally released and. Uh, and uh, handed over to them. His application letter, wherein he checked off the box mail, was released. His letter of admission, wherein he checked off the box, and uh, wherein it was addressed as Mr. Tinubu, was actually, was also released to them. So, and also, they also gave them uh, samples of diplomas that uh, they issued, some of which they issued around about the same time. So those are the things that he handed over to, to uh, to Elijah Abubakar's lawyers in Chicago. All right. Uh, but many were taken aback uh, by the president's lawyer's appeal to the court that releasing his academic record will damage him irreparably. Why did they say this to the court? Oh, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to comment on that. You see, uh, that was a lawyer's language, as legalese. Now, any lawyer that you speak to who's uh, a practitioner, will tell you that when you approach the court of law to get interlocutory reliefs, that is, after someone gets a judgment or a ruling against you, and you want to appeal, so you can go to court and say, we want a stay of execution, meaning don't do that thing before this appeal or this review, as in this case, is done. So essentially, one of the things that you have to satisfy the court with is this. You have to tell the court that, look, uh, Your Honor, if you go ahead and you allow these documents to be released now, irreparable harm would have been done. What does that mean in everyday language? It means that once the genie is out of the bottle, you can't put it back. Now, if you say, the decision, we contested that uh, based on federal laws, you know, Federal Educational Rights uh, the Privacy uh, Act, that a student is entitled to protection, that a student's records are entitled to protection. That was what we maintained. You know, I have three kids here. One has graduated college and two are still in college. I don't have access to their records. I, I can't go to their registrar and say, hey, I'm paying tuition, turn these things over to me. No, I can't do it. I can't do that. So we maintained that under FIPA, the president is entitled to privacy to his records unless he elects to release them. So the magistrate judge, Magistrate Judge Gilbert, 
having ordered that the documents be released within 48 hours, we were just a few hours away from reaching the time frame. So we went to Judge Maldonado and said, Your Honor, put a stop to the execution of this order. Because if you don't, and these records are released, then there will be no basis for you, there will be nothing for you to review anymore. That was all that we meant by that. Not irreparable harm as in uh, being shot or being killed or, uh, no. That, it was, it's, it's, it's a legal term. I mean, if you must, if you are asking for a stay, you have to demonstrate that if this order is not granted, then, Your Honor, there will be nothing before you to review. And the judge listened to us and granted that order. The judge said, yes, the judge agreed with us that if I don't stay the execution of the order of Judge Mal, uh, Judge, uh, Magistrate Judge Gilbert and these documents are released right now, if you come back to me, then there will be nothing for me to preside over. There will be nothing for me to be spent. It will be, be spent. So that was, that, was what the con that was the context in which it was used. And lawyers do that every single day in both jurisdictions. I mean, it's done in Nigeria, uh, once it's a common law uh, country, it's done in America. It's just a requirement of the law. I mean, it's just for example, now let me give you a practical example. I mean, you go to court, uh, you have a land case, uh, someone is building, or someone is about to build on your land. And then you go to court and say, my Lord, I need you to stop this individual from building on my land. And you say, one of the things that will happen is if he's not stopped, irreparable harm will be done to me. What do you mean in that context? The land, the topography will be changed. And maybe you wanted to build a bungalow. That was your plan. Right. And then the person the adversary now built something else. So that was the context. There right. was no physical, so, so, no threat to life or anything. So, like Mr. Falabi uh, asked a question because there are those who thought uh, his lawyers said that just to stop Atiku from achieving his aim. All the lawyers have anything to hide. Absolutely not. I mean, the lawyers okay. did uh, what the law enjoins them to do. It's, it's, it happens every single day. Once you bring an interlocutory application, that's the first thing you demonstrate. Irreparable harm will be done. You, the nomenclature will be changed. The narrative will be changed unless this is put in place. And the judge did exactly that. He put a, she put a stay and said, OK, come back and address me, which we did. Ultimately, she agreed with uh, Magistrate John, um, uh, Gilbert had released the document, and at that point in time, we could have appealed. There was not an appeal. Magistrate Judge Gilbert did what he had no powers to do in law. Being a magistrate judge, he could not have made a dispositive order without running it by the supervising judge. And she agreed with us on that too, and that was why she had it de novo. We started all over again. So, I mean, people just... Uh, took that and ran with it, you know, that took it completely out of context. So right. we said, put a stop, said, and it was granted because it was the right thing to do. There's this thing called res, R-E-S. Lawyers will tell you, if you don't grant a stay, the res will be destroyed and irreparable and will be done. That was all that we all did. Right, there then. was nothing right. All right. Thank you. So one of Atiku's uh, requests uh, was the release of a copy of the diplomas issued in 1997, and the university said they matched the format of the replacements dated June 27, 1997. Uh, why is there so much contention about its authenticity? Is it the, the way that I see it, I, as I said earlier, uh, this is, uh, there's, really, there's nothing there. There's nothing, and his lawyers know. These are fine lawyers, and I can tell you that for free. There's nothing there. I mean, someone graduated. He went to school. The school said he did graduate. A colleague said, a classmate said he did graduate. The school said, we have given him the diploma. Whatever he elects to do with it, that's on him. We don't have a copy of it. Can you even speak to a document that you don't have a copy of? You cannot, in law. Uh, Elijah Abubakar's lawyers, they know this. They are fine, fine, fine lawyers. You can't speak to a document that is it's not in your person. Did you create it, Mr. Westerberg? No, it was created before I got there. Uh, did you hand it over to him? No, it was handed over to him before I got there. So what was he supposed to say? 
outside of, okay, what he was presented with a copy, he saw it and he said, okay, yes, this matches uh, some others that were not previously picked up. Look at them. They are the same. They are the same format. I mean, initially, the Alaji Atikur of Ubuaka's lawyer, his argument in open court was that, the, that they were challenging it because there was a misplaced comma. I mean, that got a chuckle out of the judge. Like, really? Seriously? Yeah, he said it was, there was a misplaced comma. That it, was, it was grammatically incorrect because there was a misplaced comma. I, I didn't hear him say that again when uh, other versions were, uh, were produced. Other versions were placed the same way. So it is just a question of uh, chasing shadows. I mean, honestly, this, this, uh, this, um, uh, I will not preempt the Supreme Court of Nigeria. But again, the laws are very, very, very clear. Very, very, very clear. And as I said, uh, Chief Chris Uche is on record as having written, and he relied on decisions of the Supreme Court, that this is the law and you cannot do otherwise. And truly, he was right, because that is what the law says. And even That's leaving that tonight, let's, even, let's address the merit, please, for a minute. You are alleging forgery. How do you prove forgery? You must plead forgery, and you must plead particulars of forgery. You have to plead particulars of forgery, and you have to prove it. So how do you, you in your petition, there was not a single mention of CSU, not a single mention of CSU in the mm. petition. You can take a look. It's a public document. Now, you didn't say anything about see, uh, Chicago State University. You didn't say anything about forgery. All right. So Mr. Fahabi, let's take a break. All right, let's Thank take a break. You. I've been speaking with President Bola Tinubu's lawyer, Wale Afolabi, for discussion on Atiku Abubakar versus President Tinubu and all of the 